Rendo, Steve here. Bill Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson, available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Hopefully y'all had a good weekend and uh and yeah i know we we had a good weekend we watched fast lane yesterday with the enforcer and the friendos and uh even bad wrestling can sometimes be a lot of fun larson yeah especially if you're if you're watching it with good people mm-hmm, absolutely want to give a quick so shout fun out watching shows with uh with, with the enforcer yeah i want to give a quick shout out here to some new patrons at patreon.com forward slash steven larson callum calum shannon evil roll Evil Rolo or Royo and uh, Ashran Music. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, coming out of Fastlane, a couple of little news items broke. Oh, yes. We're going to talk oh, about yes. those in a moment. We're also going to talk about some New Japan Cup final and controversy. And yeah. then we're going to do a raw preview. We're going to talk about we're going to answer some of your questions. That's correct. We're going to do all those things. I think we're going to do all those things. First, I want to I ask so. you guys, take a moment, hit that subscribe button. And then maybe, if you think we're worth it, hit that thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up. If you Smash. want to wait till later on in the video where you're like you're more informed about whether or not you want to give this video a thumbs up, go ahead and do that as well. If you're listening to us in the audio realm, maybe leave us a rating, review, or comment. doesn't take a lot of time. It's free. It's easy. And it, and it does a lot to help the show. It does a lot to help the show. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to AMSR this whole episode? Yeah, I think so. Kind of what it feels like. Uh, I need some coffee, I guess. I don't know. I've oh. I've done so much. Here's the thing, Larson. I've done so much already today that I feel like my energy is gone. It's like it's just it's it's now I'm now I'm out because like it was the first day of school. Kids mm-hmm. are gone. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So mm-hmm. I went for like a run. I lifted some weights. I did some new gifts for the live show here on Twitch. And so now I'm good. I'm good for the day. Yeah, mellow. Yeah. Just I'm mellow. mellow. So, uh, yeah, coming out of fast lane, uh, it was like moments after I think we stopped our actual podcast. It was pretty much the moment I feel like we st- you we stopped recording the actual show. Yeah. So, like in because our post show, we, we talked. I think it was about Alex this. C. Was like, hey, uh, they tweeted it out. Uh, should we just get right into it? Here we go. It's finally happened, Steve. Mm-hmm. After almost two weeks. El Idolo! Including confirmation from Andrade himself that he had asked for his release to, last night. It happened. Andrade is a free agent. So prior to Fastlane last night, Andrade just tweeted out, good news. <laughs> but then shortly after Fastlane, uh, WWE announced that, quote, WWE has come to terms on the release of Andrade. We wish him all the best in all of his future endeavors. Uh, this morning, uh, Andrade commented on his release, tweeting, I want to thank Triple H, Paul Heyman, and William Regal for all these years and great support they have gave me all these years. Also, to the fans who are always supporting me, a big hug to all the talent workers who always behave kindly to me. Uh, shortly after news broke of Andrade's release, Fightful, go subscribe to Fightful. Sorry, Fightful Select. Go subscribe to Fightful Select. Go subscribe. You get wrestling news in your email, breaking wrestling news, uh, Fightful Select is awesome. Uh, they reported that their sources were surprised by the news of Andrade's release, noting that the release was, quote, not expected to be immediately granted. Uh, Fightful Select also added that Andrade will have a 90-day no-compete, and he will be able to use Andrade as his ring name going forward if he chooses to. However, today, Dave Melser, the wrestling observer himself, reported that, quote, sources close to the situation confirmed that Andrade's release from WWE does not include a 90-day no-compete, so he would be able to start taking dates immediately. So assuming that Melser's uh, sources are accurate, his report is sound, uh, this is kind of a shocking turnabout from how WB typically does things. If you get your release, you got to wait three months before you can actually start taking dates. Andrade can sign with AW within the few next few weeks or today. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'll, I'll I'll wait to see who's right on that one because mm-hmm. one place says one thing, another place says another thing. I mm-hmm. kind of feel like I'd be shocked if there was no no compete. I know it that, would that, be a pretty be striking shocking. departure from how WWE typically does things. Yeah, for sure, especially for um, a talent of the magnitude of Andrade, just to let him go, uh, let him have his deal, and with like no strings attached whatsoever. 
This isn't Tino Sabatelli, for God's sakes. This is Andrade. (laughs) He's a former NXT champion. (laughs) Former U.S. champion. No disrespect to Tino, but, I mean, come on. This guy is fantastic, and he's a needle mover, and he's great. Put him back with Thea Trinidad, and, man, you can can just, you know, it's a license to print money. Basically. Um, So, yeah, no, this is is fantastic news. Andrade is libre. He's free. Go where he wants. Mm -hmm. Do what he wants. Assuming probably in three months, but maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Um, maybe he'll he'll show up in the impact zone tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, but. watch that. Watch it. Yeah, that's a good selling point for us. You want to see Andrade potentially go to the impact zone? Well, we're going to be there tomorrow at Twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. Here's one reason it wouldn't happen because they shut it last week. That's why one reason he wouldn't show up in the impact zone. Alex C here uh, uh, has a point in chat. He says, "Can't a star opt to forego the no compete by not taking ninety day severance pay?" I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. Don't know. I don't. Yeah, man. That's that's don't that's. The, I wondered. Crazy. I wondered if there was some sort of thing where where there was a, a, a buyout or something like that. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Which would, uh, you know, allow the talent to forego the ninety day no compete. I don't know how it works. Mm-hmm. I don't know the deal. Again, even assuming that Meltzer's report is or his sources are accurate, we don't know these things. I guess if if Andrade La Sombra shows up on uh, Dynamite mm-hmm. on Wednesday or shows up at the end of Sakura Genesis in a in a week and a half or so, then we'll get our answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but until then, who knows? Yeah, I don't who know. Knows? That's uh, that's awesome. Where do you want? Where do you want to see him go, dude? I mean AEW I'm the, is is my favorite promotion. They're already like getting they almost have too much really good talent now. Like yeah. Miro's barely on TV. Yeah. Consistently, you know. And one thing I want for Andrade is I want he um I believe it was when he confirmed uh that he asked for his release. He says he wants to just go out and, and fulfill his dream. So wherever he goes where he's happiest Mm-hmm. Where he feels like there's the best opportunity for him, that's where I want him to go. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I, I'm I'm a, a fan of his work, and so I will. Assuming he doesn't go to AEW or Impact New Japan, I will endeavor to to follow him uh, wherever he goes, because um, uh, he's that darn good. He's that darn good. Yeah, I I just don't want him to go to a promotion that I don't watch. So Andrade, please don't go to CMLL. Or, uh, ooh, I do want to seem to go to. If he goes to AAA, I will figure out how to watch AAA. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what their format is. I'm assuming they have a weekly show. I don't know if we can watch any of it. I don't know if it's I think region that's the protected. Thing. They, I think they do shows. I don't know if they're available in the States because of the whole weird lawsuit thing that's going on. You know, with the proper VPN, anything is available in the States, Larson. <laughs> Don't we have Fair a promo point. code for one of those? <laughs> Something that's going to be available to us on April 11th, probably. Triple Threat, main event of WrestleMania. Uh, so we talked about the possibility of this happening for weeks. And after what went down at Fast Lane last night, it seemed even more likely that WWE was setting up some sort of Triple Threat bout at Mania for the Universal title between Roman Reigns, Edge, Daniel Bryan. And then uh, now, Fightful, Sean Ross, Sapp, and Dave Meltzer have now both confirm that there is uh, indeed plans uh, for such a match with Fightful reporting that, quote, it's something that they have been planning for well over one month now. Yeah. Which would make sense because that's about how long uh, Daniel Bryan has been saying, hey, I want to be in a uh, main event of WrestleMania. Man, I've been, I've been spending way too much time over the past 12 hours racking my brain over how this thing is going to go down at WrestleMania. Like, well, man. lucky for you, we don't have to make a you don't have to make any picks for another three weeks. So the, I, I I will have no more information to go off of. They're not gonna they're not gonna show their hand at all over mm. the next three weeks. I really don't think I don't think they will. I don't think they will. St- go home math never works for one thing. There's no fans there to sort of influence any decisions, any last minute changes. You would think that if they decided this back in February. That they have a plan, and I mean, it, it it would seem on the surface that the most likely thing would be what we talked about: Daniel Bryan eats the pin, so something can happen. So Edge um, can get the win, and Roman doesn't eat, eat a pin. Yeah, or Edge doesn't look bad by, and Roman gets to continue. I mean, you were the one who was insistent that Roman would hold that title for two years. I was, and and more more so, <clears throat> excuse me, more so because I don't I don't anticipate him getting pinned anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um. They showed why. him tapping out yesterday, which was I actually know, pretty there was shocking. No, 
there was no ref to to or I mean Edge was supposed to be paying attention to that. He was instead he was more concerned blasting Daniel Bryan with a chair. There was yeah. no ref to uh, to witness it. Therefore, it doesn't really count. You know what I mean? He can yeah, tap dude. out all he wants, but if no if no ref is watching, it doesn't really count. So um, my he's not going to take a pinfall loss anytime soon. Because like if the the idea is is you want Roman to retain successfully and get massive amounts of heel heat on him doing so, have him pin Edge. You know, that's the th- like if you want Roman Reigns to get maximum heat, pin Edge, deprive him of his wish of getting that belt back ten years to the day after he's retired. That's oh, yeah. massive amounts of heat on Roman Reigns. I don't know. There's I, I got I got to start doing some math on this man. There's so many different. There's so many different angles they could take here. Number one, Edge, he's not a needle mover. He ain't. He doesn't do anything for ratings. No. Roman does. Roman yep. does. Edge doesn't. So why do that? Because they like WWE likes their moments. And Edge winning that title after 10 years is a moment. It's not a bad point. It'd be a bad move. Daniel Bryan getting the win over these two monsters. Just like, just like. It's literally the exact same thing. The same seven thing. Seven years later. Seven years later, yes. I know. Same thing. You had Randy Orton, who had like a basically a fresh set of legs. He was the champion rolling yep. up in there. You had a big rumble return, which admittedly, Batista's rumble return was not nearly on the level of Edge's rumble return. That was no. a massive deal. But like still, Batista comes back, and it's kind of underwhelming. And I'm not saying Edge's return has been underwhelming, but his most recent, like his first, like when he returned at the rumble, and then he had his matches against Orton, that was a pretty kind of a big deal. There was a lot of good stuff. I just feel like with since the, then the he stuff, sort of lost it with the Roman stuff. They were. Really, I wonder if the situation was if they were looking for an angle to take with Edge beyond just hey, I want to get the title back. I never lost because yeah, that's good motivation. But there wasn't anything there necessarily personal in relation to Roman Reigns that they could really work with to build up the intensity. They tried. Uh, I didn't really feel like it really worked so well. And then when you introduce Daniel Bryan into the equation. Ah, there's the personal thing now that Edge can get connected with. Not so much with Roman, but with Daniel Bryan, because he feels like Daniel Bryan's trying to take his spot, his spotlight. I mean, he's not going to take his spot in, in the main event of WrestleMania. That's his spot. But Edge, he wants that to be about his moment, which is what he said last night when he was leaving uh, the match after blasting Daniel Bryan and Roman with the chair. This is my. This is supposed to be mine. This is my time. Yeah, but and now, now you're he just feels now like Daniel just, Bryan is trying to take that away from him. Now he's just now he's just entitled. Guy, I don't know. That's not gonna. That's not gonna play great. I don't know. I don't know. I got to see more. I got to see more. I'm not convinced. Oh yeah. Either I mean, way. I'm not gonna make any picks right now. Agreed. See more, but uh, yeah, my gut's telling me that Edge is winning. Boy, I don't. I'm not. I'm not right there now. Yet. I pick that, Edge that, 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 That's where. That's where I was. That's where I was. I was. I was Edge beating Roman one on one. If, that, if you, that was a match, I'd pick Roman. Easily. You, t- you, you Easily. put you put Daniel Bryan in there. Oh, I don't. Ten years. What? Ten years to the day. Ten years to the day, and you're gonna have you're gonna have them go home as as a bummer ending. Mm-hmm. I don't see it. Don't see Roman's it. The, Roman Roman is the, the now. He's the future. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, Roman. And then you put the biggest baby face in the company in there now, Daniel Bryan. What he's gonna eat a pin? Don't see it. Anyways. Unless unless what if Daniel Bryan feels like he has to put something on the line himself to get himself in that match? You know, he's if he puts his career, ma- if he puts his career on the line, Larson, what's your pick? If he puts his career on the line. Oh, it's still edge <laughs> <laughs> edge. Who has a contract for what? Five matches a year or something like that. Yeah, but he's got a contract after September. Unlike Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It ain't going to be on night one. Cody Miles here says if it's on night one, it's going to be the the main event. It's going to be the last match. Yeah, it's going to be the main event. It's going to be the last yeah. match. Yeah, because that is ten years to the day for Edge. Mm-hmm. To the day. Yeah. Dude, uh, the place talk. would explode but, if Brian wins. It would. It would, it would explode. It would explode. I would be really surprised if that happened. I'd just be really surprised. I know. Uh, I'd be surprised if any of these things happen, man. All right. Before we continue, here's a word from the sponsor of today's show, Raycon. Hey, Larson. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like we're both constantly staring at screens, whether it's getting work done on our computers or keeping up with the latest goings on on our phones, unplugging from the world is nearly impossible. 
True, Steve, but I'll tell you, when I'm looking to give these eyes of mine a rest, but still get the content that I need, I pop in my Raycon wireless earbuds and catch up on some podcasts or listen to an audiobook or blast the freshest jams to help fuel my workout. Yeah, I wear my Raycons when I'm out getting my wind sprints on, and I can tell you these Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat resistant construction. They feature seamless Bluetooth pairing and offer up enough battery life for six hours of playtime. And Raycon makes awesome audio accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands. And they come in a wide range of colorways and always have a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. And right now, Raycon's offering 15% off all their products to going in raw listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash raw. That's it. You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order, so feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash raw. Buyraycon.com slash raw. Uh, speaking of surprises, let's talk about the finals for the New Japan Cup. No surprise, uh, Shingo Takagi and Will Ospreay delivered another fantastic match uh, over the weekend. I, I don't know if it's better than their uh, best of Super Junior final match a couple years back, but it was damn good. What was shocking is what happened after Osprey's win. So following his victory, Osprey uh, addressed IWGP World Heavyweight Champ Kota Ibushi, who was doing commentary, had entered the ring, and then proceeded to attack. Uh, Osprey then proceeded to attack his girlfriend B Priestley, dropping her with an os cutter. Uh, why though? Uh, seemed uh, kind of out of nowhere uh, during his promo in the ring. Uh, Will was telling Coda that he needs the title more than anything, that he'll do anything to take those titles off of Coda's shoulders and put them on his own because he loves them more than anything. It's his destiny to be champ. Uh, he loves it, them more than any, anything or anyone, and he turns to B and hits her with the cutter. During his post-match comments, uh, Osprey added that if he can give an os cutter to the woman he loves more than anything in the world, the woman who's been, who's been in his life for five years, he has a house and family with her, but it means nothing to him. The only thing that matters, the only thing he loves is the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And if he can do what he did out there to someone he loves, then what the F is he going to do to Kota Ibushi? Uh, yeah. And then uh, he later added, while uh, during his press conference, toasting Zimas. <laughs> really at Zima? I didn't notice yeah. that. That's great. Yeah, it was Zimas. With Jeff Cobb and the Great Ocon. He says, welcome to the single life as well, boys. And, he, and he's all laughing maniacally about it. Uh, not a fan of this, to be honest with you. It was it was just, it was a terrific, it was it was a terrific It was match. a really good match. And and Will Ospreay as a heel has improved a lot on the mic. Yeah. This yeah. whole thing just, the, 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 the off cutter on B just came out of absolute nowhere. See, this is a story, this is a, 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 a story beat. Hey, champ. Look, I, I, I'm so crazy about getting those titles off you. Look what I'll do to someone I care about to prove to you what lengths I'll go to to get the titles off you and onto myself. We've seen this happen before. You know, this particular approach to, to, to proving how awful of a heel someone is. We've seen before. It just, I, I, the nature of it just seemed so unprovoked, unmotivated. Yeah. Yeah. From a storytelling perspective, I'm like, and the and the crowd reacted that way too. Like it literally sounded like all the air went out of the building. They were like, "It did." It was it was weird because like you know, the 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 crowds in Japan typically you know they they don't just cheer for anything or anyone, and they you know they react if they if a, if a reaction is there was like an uncomfortable silence mm -hmm. after this. It wasn't like, "Oh my God, boo, screw you, you suck." And I don't know what they're allowed to do in terms of like you know vocalizing stuff. I don't think they're allowed to do much. They're supposed to either clap or whatever, but like. There was like it was just like an uncomfortable silence and they're just standing there. Like you said, this this kind of stuff has been done before. It's it it's 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 it I don't know. In my in my opinion, it's kind of in shitty taste. It's mm -hmm. sort of in poor taste, it's tacky. I mean, a guy basically severs a relationship using an act of violence, and I understand that this is wrestling, and I understand that intergender matches are a thing that I'm I'm cool with for the most part. But I view those as more like, you know, Wonder Woman fighting Steppenwolf to use 
a, a relatively recent analogy as opposed to, hey, I'm breaking up with my girlfriend. I'm going to do it with an os cutter to for what reason exactly? I mean, I, I the, the, the motivation doesn't make a lick of sense anyways because it's like the one person who does actually help me with these matches, the one person who, you know, actually helps me succeed. Yeah, there's I'm gonna a couple get, times. I'm going to get rid of that person just to show you. This match, I know, where B actively helped Osprey. Like, you know, what lengths I'll go to. And yeah. it's like, I don't know. It make a whole lot of sense. It, would there be some amount of, like, storyline redemption if she, if it was a big ruse and she took the Oz cutter? Just to like you know confuse or to 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 come back and like help Osprey and oh we were all in it together kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just it's I I don't know. I just don't like there's because of the general nature of wrestling and the fact that it's like there are, there's an element. Yes, there is an element of obviously it's it's fictional stuff and so oh <laughs> bad guy heel we're supposed to hate this guy and want to see you get his his butt kicked and everything. But, like, it's also an element of, you know, uh, it's supposed to be a realistic portrayal of, of combat sports to a degree. That's one element of it, even yeah. though these guys yeah. are clearly simulating fighting. Um, yeah. And they're selling silly moves like leg drops and rainmakers and stuff like it's it's, it's the end of the world um, when just a straight up punch would do worse damage. Um you know, I get that, but like that element of it, of that, like, you know, you're supposed, there's supposed to be some element of realism there. The best stuff mm-hmm. does. And the, the best wrestling is in new Japan because so often they come off as real fights. I mean, yeah. they do amazing things and spectacularly physical and athletic things, but it's like, man, these guys really look like they're beating each other up sometimes. Another thing that new Japan does well is not do this kind of sports entertainment type stuff for storylines, you know? It's like Vince, uh, somebody's literally bringing it up right here. Uh, Okra New, sorry, I can't, I, the, the name is, the pronunciation's off. Um, says Randy Orton did the same thing as Stacey Keebler. Yeah, and I can't stand that stuff. I just think it's it's tacky. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know, if if somebody, and the, the, getting to the, getting to my point, I know I'm taking the scenic route here, but getting to the point that wrestling is supposed to be, one element of it is like live sports presentation. Mm-hmm. If somebody in the UFC, and I know this has happened to some controversy because they handle it different ways at different times, but if somebody in the UFC out in front of everybody in the crowd lays out like his girlfriend or something like that or a significant other, that guy would be out. He would be done. You're, you're like you're gone. You're suspended or you're probably fired. You're for sure getting arrested. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And so mm-hmm. when you can't mm-hmm. add that level of realism to it, it just it comes off as just tacky and not and and t- it takes me out of the product that they're showing. Me. Mm-hmm. 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 That's my opinion. I know there's plenty of people out there. Oh no, it's fine. He's a bad guy. He's a heel. Okay, well, if you're cool, that that's cool. But like, I don't know. I just it's 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 very. It just seems I don't know. New Japan has been weird lately. It's been weird lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't I wasn't into it. And, I mean, the, and the. the so much like the match was really good like i said i thought osprey's delivery as a heel doing the promo was was a vast improvement of what i've I've seen of him in the past Mm -hmm. so much of of that match and the post-match stuff was decent Mm -hmm. good yeah Yeah. and to have it marred by that yeah Yeah. you know because that's the only thing people were talking about i didn't hear anybody talking about the match which was awesome Mm -hmm. everybody was talking about the ass cutter on b Mm -hmm. yeah and it's like it's it's entirely possible plausible that like maybe this angle was brought to the table by B and and Will Ospreay. Yeah. yeah entirely and that's possible. that's you know, it's that's totally, you know, that's besides the point in my opinion. I just think it's mm-hmm. it's sort of a tacky angle, you know. Yeah, agreed. Wow. Agreed. Agreed. Uh let's talk about one of our favorite wrestlers turned actor, Steve Dave Batista. Yeah. Uh, he might not be a Hall of Famer after all. So prior to the pandemic, Dave was announced as one of the inductees of the 2020 Hall of Fame. But now it seems like Batista won't be inducted this year with the rest of the 2020 class. Uh, according to numerous outlets, Batista has been removed from the list of inductees. And Meltzer mentioned on a recent episode of Wrestling Observer Radio, and these transcripts are from WrestlingNews.co, that, quote, Dave Batista is not going in after all, and I don't know the exact reason. The reason has been floating around is that there is a date conflict with him. I don't know that to be the case. Uh, Fifle Select, however, reporting that sources have informed them that WWE prefers Batista to be inducted. 
in front of a full live crowd. And that's why they're holding off. Dave's a busy guy. They've got the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special coming up, plus Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy 3. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, interesting that WWE would prefer. I mean, so wait, what is the deal with the uh, with the Hall of Fame? It's going to be on two nights because they're doing 2020 and 2021, right? Isn't it doing? I are they think, doing over two nights? Or is it going to be one night? I saw they were shooting it over two nights, but mm. was this going to air on one? I think because Monday's Raw, Tuesday would be Hall of Fame, Wednesday, Thursday would be NXT Takeover, mm-hmm. Friday is SmackDown, and Saturday, Sunday would be Mania, and then of course the following Monday's Raw, and then Al- Tuesday after that, uh, the debut of NXT on Tuesday. Alex C says uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are in Love and Thunder, the Thor movie as well. I didn't know that. That makes me incredibly happy. Yeah, oh, he just made Steve very, that's very That's going to be the best see. Marvel movie of all time. You watch. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. the best. Christian Bale's in it. Oh, that's gonna Really? Be I didn't know that. Yeah. I think he plays that's a bad guy else. or something. Yeah. That's something uh, else. So that's pretty cool. All that. Dave will good. get in at some point. Dave is totally uh-huh. a Hall of Fame worthy guy. Oh, hell yeah, man. He's like, man, he's, I, I had like a late appreciation for Batista. While he was doing his thing, I was like, I, I actually, I think I was watching when, they did the big Triple H thing. I think I went to that mania. Um, I think. Mm. Uh, mania 21. <laughs> I went to that one. And uh, and I was a fan of all that stuff. But like I, it was also like right after that is around the time I started dropping out. And mm-hmm. so it wasn't until like, you know, we started doing this that I went back and watched some Batista stuff, some Batista. Uh, and oh, man, his first retirement thing was brilliant. Brilliant. Just Love great. That. Just great. Gosh, that was so good. That was yeah. so good. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the same boat. I didn't really wa- I kind of stopped watching wrestling for a good portion of the mid aughts so I missed most of his run then. Mm-hmm. But what I've caught up on, I've enjoyed, and, and yeah, some of his his character work, especially towards the tail end of his first run, and, and of course the second run was really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, really yeah. fun. His movie work's been outstanding so far. Oh God, it's been great. Uh, I re- I really enjoyed his match against Triple H at Mania, his retirement match. It was way too long. It was yeah. fun. It was but fun. It was fun. They looked like two guys. Had a yeah. good time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Uh, let's talk about Raw. Whether uh, Who knows if this is going to be fun or not. Uh, Raw tonight. There's only one thing announced, and this one thing announced so far gives me hope because uh, Rhea Ripley, to make her Monday Night Raw debut after weeks of vignettes teasing her arrival, and that uh, followed weeks of her having a hell of a performance in the Rumble, and then not and not them not doing anything with her. Mm-hmm. So, what role she's going to play in the road to WrestleMania? Uh, who knows? But it's good to see her back on TV. Um, so, but uh, yeah, who knows what else is going to happen? Because they've announced this is my else. brutality. How would you debut her, man? Good guy or bad Charlotte. guy? Good guy I mean, or bad she guy? Be. It's a fresh, it's a clean slate, mega heel, yeah. and then she'll she'll be forced into becoming a huge face. Yeah, yeah. Confronting Charlotte is what it should be, but I know you know Charlotte's going to be on Raw tonight. Yeah, I don't know. So, but that's what it should be. It should be Rhea confronting Charlotte. Who knows what will happen? You want to answer yeah, some questions yet? Let's answer some questions. All right. Uh, got Mr. Triple up Mania. here on our Twitter feed. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just That's all right. people know every Monday, every Monday between 8 and 10 Pacific time, I put up our question thread on Twitter. Yep. And then, of yep. course, if, you're, if you guys are watching live in, in Twitch, I mean, you can, but we basically get most of these off Twitter. Juan Guerrero Jr., Mr. Triple Mania himself. Ricky Steamboat and Rey Mysterio are often mentioned as two super baby faces who can never be heel. However, if they didn't turn heel back in their respective prime years, who do you think would have been the better heel? Was Ricky, uh, Ricky Steamboat easily. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine him being, because he's a great looking dude. Could you imagine him being like, a, you know, he puts on, he wears sunglasses everywhere. Um, you know, like a, a, a limousine guy. This is what I uh, in the eighties. All bad guys are limousine guys. Yeah, I know. Um, interesting to try to do with Steamboat is because he was a, he's a really good technical wrestler. Yeah. What if he kind of did a Zack Saber Junior thing? Right. Zack Saber yeah. Junior is a brilliant heel. He's a yeah. brilliant heel. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh, by the way, speaking of, speaking of Ricky Steamboat, uh, he is booked in my rebooking of WrestleMania. Oh. This is this is like the most work I put into a project. <laughs> this sounds like he's been working on it for seemingly weeks. It's an hour long. <laughs> I've got commercials from 1985 oh gosh. in it. 
It's amazing. And I've got a great intro. And thank you very much for, oh, sending, for, for helping me out. It worked brilliantly. It's a great intro. It's debuting this Sunday at oh, youtube.com slash friendoville. Uh, and I'm doing commentary all over these matches. It's, it's done through a 2K19. Man, it's got time travel. It's got me rebooking things. It's got the way WrestleMania 1 should have gone down. Oh, kind of feel great. like if, if WrestleMania 1 had gone down the way you booked it, WWE wouldn't be around anymore. <laughs> well, to be remains to be seen. Maybe that'll be part of the story. I'm going to do one, every, one of these every month. There we uh, go. And, uh, and, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I could run WWE in the ground. That'd be interesting. I'd mm-hmm. like that, uh, that alternative history just to see where it leads. Patrick yeah. Spark, B-Man. Uh, what wrestler cameos do you want to see in NBC shows and movies now that network is on Peacock and vice mm-hmm. versa? I think Big E is a huge fan of This Is Us by, based on his Twitter feed. Oh, wow. I want to see Big E. I don't, I've never seen This Is Us. Never seen it. Never seen all, all I know is I think there's some time travel involved in that show as well. I know it's a drama. That's all I know. It's a drama, and I think it's set in like several time periods. Maybe. I Mandy think Milo, Moore's in it, I think. Milo's like in the 80s or something like that. You know way he more had, than I do. He has a mustache. It's very dramatic, the, the the commercials for it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know it does. And I think I've seen Big E tweet about it. So uh, let's put Big E in This Is Us. All right, I'm going to put... Uh, I'm going to put John Laurinaitis. I'm going to retro, I'm going to retcon him into episodes of the office. Cause that's like the, other. Wow. it's like Peacock is all WWE and it's the office. I do a tour of Peacock of WWE on Peacock today on Friendoville as well. YouTube.com slash Friendoville. Now that I've got all this free time, Lars, I'm looking at like eight Friendoville videos every single day. Seemingly 56 videos a week. <laughs> that's a lot. Nah, it's good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, I'm not going to do any. Ca- Mr. Sinister, if you're here in chat, you can ask a different question. I don't like casting questions. I don't cast anymore. A white brownie. I love Mr. Sinister, though. He's great. Yes. I'll do one. He says, cast current WWE wrestlers to be the Justice League. I'm just going to do one character. I'm going to do Superman, and it's clearly John Cena. John Cena. Uh, I will do, uh, Rhea Ripley as Wonder Woman. Perfect. Alex Foster. I'm the only one who wants a fatal four way for the universal title at Mania. The fourth man being Jay Uso. I still really want him to be the one who dethrones Roman, especially with how edge has been getting in his head. Now, the only situation I can see where Roman eats a pin at Mania is if Jay costs him the match. That's That'd be crazy. It. That'd be crazy. Um, no, I. The thing is, like Jay is an errand guy. He's running Roman's errands. I don't see him as. I don't see him. Yeah, if if he helps somebody else beat Roman, yes, I think that's great. But I don't. I don't want. I don't necessarily think he should, unless they started building him back again. Um, but I don't know. If it was told right, I could see it. Yeah. Uh, Nick White Brownie asks, you're both approached by Warner Brothers to write and produce a sequel to Ready to Rumble with Uh AEW talent, which makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. What's the story and does it get a comic book tie in? We had this question before. You had a really good answer for um, it was like the uh, Jimmy King's son. So it would have been who is Oliver Platt's son. I swear I thought you had a good answer for that. Or I guess at this point you could do like whoever David Arquette's character's name is, son, because Arquette's like 50 years old. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't remember what my answer was. <laughs> yeah, I'm drawing a blank on everything right now. Wardlow. Wardlow. Wardlow could be a... Uh... Wardlow could be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Wardlow is my answer. <laughs> and yes, it does get a comic book tie-in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, or no, you know, we just make it ready to rumble too, and have Arquette's character come back. Yeah, there you go. Here's the thing: they all use these legends, anyways. So you just bring back the same crew. Is Oliver Platt mm-hmm. still with us? Is he still alive? As far as I know, I think he's still alive. He's a funny dude. 
Uh, Lord Ziffer, is it more likely we get Sammy versus Owens at Mania in singles action? Or do you guys think they get put in a multi-person match for the Intercontinental title? I thought that as well. I thought that maybe they'll do a multi-person match for the IC title. I, I get the feeling we're going to find out this coming Friday what direction yeah. they're going to take. It's going to be one of the I two. I kind of feel like to a certain degree, Sami Zayn has moved past the I got screwed out of the Intercontinental title thing and more there is a larger, vaster conspiracy against me. Yeah. With but... that being an aspect of it. So I don't know if... I don't know. I feel I kind of feel like it, uh, it'd be a... From a storytelling perspective, I think it'd be better just to have a one-on-one bout between Sammy and Owens. That's my take, though. Yeah. Uh, Greg Morris, if Daniel Bryan is added to the Mania match only to eat the pin, who is the first person to actually beat Roman? Also, for whoever won Rumble predictions, uh, how about the winner can change a pick or point allotment the night of Mania? So Steve had that choice for winning Rumble. He could either uh, uh, assign me punishment or take advantage for Mania. He chose punishment, so he gets no advantage for Mania. Well, I'm still waiting for that punishment to happen. Though. Yeah, no, I know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can do it this upcoming weekend. I'm going to see if I can do it this upcoming weekend. All right. Saturday, I want to get it in before Mania. Um, and I can't do it the weekend after that. Uh, who will actually beat Roman? It's got to be... See, I, the, the, one of many reasons I'm hesitant to think that Edge would be that guy is... Edge is not going to be a foundational piece for the future. And considering how badly, creatively, they botched the the fallout from Brock beating Taker Streak. Because the idea was Brock is the man who who broke Taker's undefeated Mania Streak. Therefore, whoever beats Brock is a made man. Like, that's the that's the next huge guy. At least that was the idea I always gathered from it. Yeah, um, I think you're right they, about that. And they botched that completely because they never really f- followed through on it. It was supposed to be Roman at WrestleMania 31. They got cold feet. They had Seth cash in. And then even years after that, when they try to have Roman be the guy that beats Brock clean, they never really went through uh, with it. Um, it took like a huge distraction from Braun trying to cash in at SummerSlam a few years back where Roman finally got his clean win over Brock. Clean. Kind of clean. You know? So... Uh, if they have Roman dominate, be champion for a while, parallel to that, they got to build up somebody. So when that person beats Roman, it's a huge deal. It's yeah. A huge deal. I, to, to me, I feel like the answer is somebody who <clears throat> they haven't even come close to deciding on yet. I don't think they've even yeah. come. I, I don't think that they're even considering it right now. What you're saying is absolutely true. And I think it's it's more like I don't think they dude I don't think they build people with that in mind. I no, think that when something when you know he they, they take everything step by step, like what makes sense in the moment. And so like Roman's gonna have his his long run, and when a case like a Daniel Bryan around Mania Thirty One comes up. You know, when some when they they sort of feel in the wind, okay, we need to we need to start looking at who's going to be the guy. Then they sort of see what their roster looks like. Okay, do we need to shift anything? This guy's hot. You know, this would work. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. they they come around to it. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, if if it was Edge one on one with Roman, if he was a pure baby face and if he was electrifying crowds and everything, or I know there haven't been crowds, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then ratings, the it might have felt inevitable that, like, okay, well, you know, one legend's going to take out this guy who's like a legend in the making, maybe. Um, because, like you said, WWE likes their moments. You throw Daniel Bryan in the mix and it just throws everything off. I have no idea mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, in terms of like a one on one guy, I don't know. It could be, uh, I don't know. It could be like, I don't know, like Damian Priest or something weird like that. You know, it's like if he catches fire in two years, maybe mm-hmm. it's going to be that guy, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. it's going to be Keith Lee, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. he sh- it should be somebody like Keith Lee. Yeah, maybe um, it'll be Adam Cole. Maybe it'll be, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. 
Maybe it'll be Cedric Alexander if he breaks free, you know, if, yeah. if, if he breaks away. I don't think that person is – I don't think they have like, oh, hey, you know, this guy right here, we have a two-year plan for him. They no, they don't, don't do that anymore. They don't do that. Probably should, but they don't. I just, you know, I wonder, yeah, it seems like it's the kind of thing they should do, but I just wonder if – I mean, dude, you and I, and I've heard this before, you and I are not wrestling promoters. We're not bookers. Like, I, I, I just get the feeling that, like, there's a reason they don't do that. And, yeah, some of it might be Vince McMahon's whims, but at the same time might be, well, because you don't know what's going to happen in two years. You have no idea where yeah. if, if Matt Riddle's going to be injured or not in two years. So totally, totally. I'm not sure you can put all your eggs in the basket of a guy who you don't know what's going to happen. You well, know? obviously, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I think you should at least have an idea of where you want to take a story when you start it rather than just start a story and see what happens, you know? And Overrated. yeah, granted things change and people get hurt and, and people get, you know, get over. And, and so, yeah, you, you could change course, but I think if you got to lay the building blocks for something, if you're trying to establish a huge moment at some juncture, that's, I think, I think they, tr I think they think they do that with a lot of people. And then they just, and, and then it's just run. It just, it, you know, 90% of the time, just, it just, they don't know how to do follow through. There's just no follow through. They don't know how to do it. There's just no follow through. People get huge moments and they just don't do anything with them. Yeah. Just don't do anything. Uh, Gareth asked, hair versus hair matches are great, but who do you like to see in a beard versus beard match? Oh, wow. Uh, have Maybe Shane Chapa. grow out like this, the, the, you know, the bare minimum of a beard. And then yeah. make it official him versus Braun. Then Shane wins and Braun has to shake. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Champa and somebody else who needs to lose because I don't want to see Champa ever lose that beer. Buddy Murphy. Oh, there you go. He'd probably look just normal. Champa would lose all of his leathery gravitas without that beard of his. That gray 35-year-old beard. <laughs> I know. Uh, Dalen Dula, today while taking a walk, he came across a strange hole in the ground. It's only two feet wide, but seems to go down to immeasurable depths for wow. safety. You want to fill it in. Mm. But as you shovel in dirt, the hole, this is scary, seems to get larger. What wrestling? I, I thought I, I want to just jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds like a nightmare. What wrestler do you ask to bring you more dirt? It's easy. It's Otis. He brings the heavy machinery. Okay, well, can we stop using that every time we have a question where it's like, because these questions have the time that like, has to do with like building stuff or tearing stuff down. Let's take heavy machinery out of the equation, Larson. Tucky then. Tucker Knight. This is still heavy machinery. Oh, oh drat. Um... Uh oh, it's it's Triple H because he knows a thing or two about burying. Yeah, see, there you go. That's perfect. I've never seen anything I couldn't bury. There you go. Oh man, this is great. I am Elves says it would never happen, but I'd love to see Roman chopped down by Walter. How great would that be? You oh, know? that'd be amazing. I'll yeah, build up Walter to be the one that beats Roman. I'd be all about hot that. off of. How about this? The Raw after Mania when Roman beats The Rock, biggest star of all time. He's like, you know, this is, it's solidified, this is my island. And then, da -da, da -da. And, Walter, and instead instead of like Walter's like regular theme music, it's, uh, which, whatever that is, it, it's just like the Jaws theme, because Vince, <laughs> he comes out, he's got a fin. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's a shark, how about that? Oh yeah, so like metaphorically, no, he's a real shark. Uh, He's a man shark. Sense. All right, whatever. Yeah. Land out. shark. He comes out as land shark from SNL. Hey, I'm land shark. I'm going to take you down now. So he knocks. He knocks on the door. Knock, Who's knock. there? What? Pizza. <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not land shark, are you? No. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh no. Oh dear. Uh, NJWP. Says when WWE sells their network rights internationally, could the users end getting a better deal than those in the U.S. As would likely have to go through a provider, which is in a lot of countries. I should have read that one before I answered it. Before I, before I, I should have read it silently first. Could the users end 
getting end up getting a better deal than those in the U.S. Oh, I have no idea. There's no way to no know idea. That. I have no clue. We're not well versed in, in broadcasting rights. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. Uh, Connor, I know how much the Velcro titles bother Steve. I want to know your thoughts on Roman being the only one to have a title with no Velcro. What? Connor said, really? Noticed it first at Fastlane, but I think the last SmackDown was the first show with it. How long until all the titles have no Velcro anymore? He never puts it around his waist. So I wonder if it's just like nothing to attach it. I didn't notice, so I don't know. I didn't but, notice I mean, that. If there were snaps on it. I did not notice that. That is awesome. Good for him. Good for the tribal chief. Yep. Um, Putting his foot down. Sticking with tradition. And I have no idea, but I hope they all get rid of the Velcro. I hate the Velcro. I hate it so much. It's if you're gonna at least if you're gonna do it, make it like the same color as the strap. Like I actually I wouldn't mind it if it was just more discreet because I understand functionally speaking if Vince doesn't like people fiddling with belts or something, whatever I think the reason. For the universal one or one of them, yeah, I thought it was universal. It had blue Velcro on it. It wasn't black Velcro. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it is. But it was I like that they... giant strat, this dry, yeah, giant yeah. strip of it. See if they if they somehow made it more discreet, I'm then like, I'd be okay if they could with it. Use like magnetic snaps as opposed to snaps that actually snaps. You know? Yeah, something, something like that. I don't know. Something. I don't know. Silly Lake putty. White House. Silly putty. Do that. I don't think that really sticks that well. Unless you want to take newsprint off newspapers. <laughs> Remember, that was uh, like the coolest thing when we were kids, I man. I know. It was pretty neat. Blake you Whitehouse. Are you newspaper looking for, backwards? <laughs> are you looking forward to the upcoming wrestling TV series, Heels? Or have you even heard of it? That's a Stephen Amell show that I think CM Punk is doing some consulting work on. Yeah. And uh, who's the who's his co-star in that? Isn't it Joe, like Joel K- K- the Robocop? Isn't he in it? Joel Kinnaman? Kinnaman? There was a sh- there was a shot of uh, Stephen shot. Amell and then a dude yeah, next to him, too. and I swear it looked like Joel Kinnaman, but I could be right. Oh, totally, here, could be I'll, wrong about I'll, that. I'll look into it. See if you can look into that. But yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. It might be good. If it's good, I'll be into it. If it's bad, Same. not so much. But Same. you know, ditto. I'm not sure what the writing, uh, who the writing team is. On that. No, I don't see Joel Kinnaman here as uh, okay as being in this. Stephen Amell heels. So I, there's a shot. Yeah, I can see why you think that's Joel Kidman. Look kind of looks shot. like him, doesn't it? A little bit. Who is that guy? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, never mind. I just did a close-up of him. From far away, it totally does. When you get close-up, it looks nothing like him. Never mind. I like him. I like that guy. Robocop, he's good. Uh, just not as Robocop. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Anthony Matthews, two questions. Since Drew beat Lashley clean at Backlash last year, do you have any math that suggests Lashley goes over at Mania? The math on Lashley going over at Mania is that he's peaking with Vince McMahon at the right moment. Mm-hmm. I think the math is is look who got the lightning in their in their entrance. It's a lot like of lightning too. It's not just I like one like, bolt. I feel like the 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 person with lightning is probably going to get the win. Yeah, it's not the just guy who just lunch. broke Vince McMahon's sword during his entrance. That yeah. kind of sealed oh, the deal. Wow. See Vince's yeah. or Drew's face after he did that? He was like, oh, yeah. this is going to be my last victory for a while. Hopefully they don't change the the, the finish of this match while I'm out here killing the Sheamus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't go right. Uh, uh, Anthony Tobias, if WWE remade any show that is currently on Peacock, what show should it be and, w- and what wrestlers would play the roles? Let's name a show and cast one person in it. Wait, what, what's the what's the premise of the question? If WWE made a sh- any show that is currently on Peacock, so current run NBC show, oh. you know, something from years past, what should the show be and who should play the roles? Quantum Leap. Mm-hmm. That was an NBC show anyways. I don't know if it's on Peacock or not. It should be. Quantum Leap, Sam Beckett, uh, played by Scott Bakula, would now be played by... Amos. And his and his Dean Stockwell would be AJ Styles. AJ Styles, that's good. <laughs> I traveled back in time. <laughs> I know this show is not on Peacock, but I hope it will be someday. Night Court. Yeah, of course. And have Xavier Woods as the judge. Mm-hmm, that's good. Harry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, that's good. Night by Night says Seinfeld with Sami Zayn as George Costanza. Did you see his yeah. like be backstage profanity yet, laced no. promo? It was wow. really good. Well, he yeah. was so upset about the the video package, the silly video package that they were mm-hmm. in. That's funny. Uh, the Wild Dude. What are your favorite movie and uh, movie or movies and genres you typically dislike? I don't really like musicals. In fact, I don't like musicals at all. Um, I like one musical, and it's Grease, and that's it. Yeah, I like I liked Hamilton. I thought Hamilton was pretty good. Yeah. But that was just the that was just the you know the stage production they photographed. It wasn't like it wasn't like a real movie. No. Yeah. Um, so I like that. Um, I I generally like if if a musical is good, I'm not against it. I gen but yeah, there aren't a lot that I like. Uh, I haven't seen a romantic comedy lately that are like I'm they're very few and far between like the wedding yeah. singer is like the only romantic comedy that I think I've ever really liked like like oh man I'll watch that the shit out of that movie it's the wedding singer that movie's awesome uh coach John Pliskin at what point does a tag team go from thrown together to a real tag team mm. what is the the precedence to change them don't they need Isn't matching it- gear and a name they need a name, matching gear, and a theme song exclusive to them. Mm-hmm. At that point, and then I guess there there should be some sort of prerequisite number of matches, perhaps. Yeah, you know, I think there's a, a certain amount, of, and they, of course they have to register as a tag team. In kayfabe, they have to totally fill out the proper paperwork. Uh, of course. The Chuck, how can WB have every founding member member of New Japan wrestling factions and do nothing with them? We asked that question to to Carl Anderson in our Carl Anderson uh, Gallows and uh, and Rocky Romero interview. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He just did exactly what you did. He shrugged. This is the man who actually said, "Yeah, we pitched it. We pitched it. We had a we had all of them. We had AJ. We had Finn Balor, and they even had Adam Cole, and they had the Good Brothers, and they did nothing with it. Nothing. They did nothing. It's nothing. It's it's insane." They're insane. That's why. <laughs> That's a good as answer as any. <laughs> yep. Anyways, let's do one more good question and then we'll call it a day. All right. Very well. For now. Then today. Well, later today. We'll then do tonight. Raw. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For raw. Uh, trying to find one we haven't answered. I think that was the last good one we had, so that's fine. All right. Thanks All everybody right, for tuning in. I know that was a bit of a, a bit of a anticlimactic end of the show here today, but that's okay. Uh, you know, if you've given us a thumbs up already, maybe consider taking it back. Thanks for watching, <laughs> everybody. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Hopefully, this sign off is enough to, to to earn your thumbs up back. Can I get it back? Can I get it back? Yeah, Thank you, everybody. Please. <laughs> Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. 